What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training. And today we're gonna to be breaking down how to restack a DB and we're gonna be talking about some situations when I'm trying to restack a DB but he doesn't allow me to. So we're gonna be looking at three different routes here. The first two are gonna be great examples of a restack, how that helps you guys, how you guys can actually restack a DB. And then the third example we're gonna look at is when the DB plays it perfectly, how can I still win the route, okay? So I hope this video gives you guys some value but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver, you wanna get stronger, you wanna get bigger, improve your on-field performance, guys. Check out that very first link in the description for our two month long wide receiver gym bundle. The specific exercise wide receivers need to do in the gym broken down step by step in a 28 day specific plan for the first month, then a 28 day specific plan for the second month, but more advanced exercise. So you can see results faster. Again, check out that very first link in the description. Hope we can get you guys on that soon. Let's get started. So this first route here, we're going to be talking about a shoulder reduce technique. Okay. So there's something you guys can do at any time when you guys restack. We're going to talk about a drill also that you guys can do to help with that. So Thayer Thomas here is going to be running this corner post. Not even worried about the corner post. There's some different things I would like to change about the corner post. But the main thing I want to talk about is this just like first five yards. Because why is restacking a DB important? Why is it important to get to this spot right here on a DB where I'm over the top, he's trailing me. This isn't even necessarily probably the best restack example, but this is probably what you're going to see most of the time. It's very rare that you completely dog a dude, especially a talented DB, and get completely over the top of him. Obviously, I would like to every single time, but this is more realistic as to what you're going to be able to get. The next clip is more of a restack example that I like. We're going to be taking a look at Des Bryant. But this right here, see how he's able to get back over the top. When he comes off the line, he's in this explosive pad level position. You guys hear me talk about being in explosive position all the time. I come off the line, I want to be explosive because A, if he gets hands, I'm not going to be completely knocked off this route. But B, I can shoulder reduce and get back over the top. Because if I could create any kind of separation, I get this DB to stop his feet at all, right? Get his feet to be dead because dead feet we should win every single time as a receiver. And I keep my pad level low and you see how he kind of dips that inside shoulder, that shoulder reduce. That's what we call that, a shoulder reduce technique. So when I shoulder reduce, I'm really fighting. You're like a D lineman because what's the worst thing he could do? He could get hands on you with the left. You could just shrug him off. Maybe he tries to get hands on you with the right off the line of scrimmage and you could just swat him by, shoulder reduce, then we're back over the top. So it's really important that you guys, the, the shoulder closest to the DB the shoulder closest to the DB when you restack has got to reduce. So if I could shoulder reduce, get back over the top, I know I could get some separation. So it's important to restack because when he's trailing you and he's trailing your back hip, you could pretty much do whatever you want. You could work a rocker step, that'll get him to move. You could work a heavy indicator cut to the left. In this case, we're working a corner post. So when I commit my hips to a break and you see he's watching those hips, he's trailing right behind me, he's going to try to undercut this thing because that's the only way, it's the only option he has. When I when he's trailing me and, he's, and I restacked him and he's watching my hips, that's his only way of direction. So if I can actually, if I know how to sell routes on the back end, if I know how to sell routes as a receiver at the top of the break, and I know that if I work a rocker step, I work one heavy cut, if I work, if I just drop down violently, he's probably not going to be able to recover in time because that hip drop should be just sudden. All the cuts you make should be explosive. Any kind of double movie break you make should look like you're running the first move. So if you can get to that restack position, you should be able to get separation. It's bad if you don't get separation when you restack. That means you you ran a bad route. That's that's plain and simple what it is. If you can get to this point, you should win every single time with a DB. If I get to the where he's trailing behind me and he's watching my hips every single rep you guys should win that's the mentality you guys got to have that's the mindset you got to have being able to go into um be, being able to go into any kind of route any kind of one-on-one -on -one situation okay let's watch the thing again full speed so the first way to restack is with that shoulder reduce technique any release that you give you could do it with an inside release and you would shoulder reduce your left to get back over the top right you could go outside release shoulder reduce with your right shoulder in this case and then get back over the top let's watch it again full speed so split, dip that shoulder, work to restack, and then work that route at the top of the break. Now we're looking at this router from Des Bryant. So this is, again, more realistic situation of a restack, but we're going to talk about something that you can use when you have an outside breaking route. So watch at full speed. Great job using the split. Again, working to restack, gets that DB to trail, and then breaks this thing off. So now the main thing I want to point out here is that he doesn't just run towards the sideline, even when he has a comeback, right? So this is why restacking is also important because of depth on the route, because of spacing on the play, right? So now when we come off here and he gives that little split release and we're working to the outside, you see how he doesn't just run towards the sideline and run away from this DB? Because where, where's this DB playing? Let's talk about this. Inside.
inside shade, right? So why is he inside shade? This is something you got to ask yourself when you guys are watching film of DBs throughout the season. You see guys on film, okay, he likes to go inside shade a lot. Why is he going inside shade? What does he not want to give up? He doesn't want to give up the inside 100%. And also because man coverage probably doesn't want to get beat over the top. So he wants to use that sideline to his help because if you just run to the outside and try to run a fade, impossible throw for the quarterback. You run to the outside, you're running a comeback like in this case, and you're a yard from the sideline, impossible throw for the quarterback. He has more space to react. So he wants to force us to the sideline. So if I come off here and I just keep running towards the sideline, he played this thing perfectly. He did his job. He, he The sideline is his help. That's like having 10 other defenders on the other side of the field when he's using the sideline. So we got to make sure that when I get here, you see how Dez does such a great job of pushing vertical, staying at the bottom of the numbers, giving him a little stutter. And when he gets back over the top of him, this is what I want to talk about. When you're able to restack a DB and you're able to get back over the top of him and he's trailing your back hip, peeking back with those eyes is the, one of the best ways to get separation. You could peek back and run a comeback. You could peek back, run a stop route. You could peek back and here. You could peek back if you're maybe from the slot or a tighter split, run a corner, run a speed out. There are so many different things you could do with this peek back, but it's mainly outside breaking routes. You don't want to probably, I mean, you could peek back and run a dig. I don't personally like that just because he's tra sitting on the inside. I like more of keeping your head down when you got to run a dig to get him to commit, but I want him to think vertical right now. And that's how we do this. When we restack and we got to make that sudden cut, especially to the outside, I got to make this DB think I'm, I'm getting this fade every single time, much like anything else, because if we can restack him and he could commit and be actually trying to run and play catch up with us and I'm selling with my eyes, I sell with my pad level and I have just a very sudden break, this dude cannot react. The low man's going to win. You see how low Des gets at this break and you see how high this DB is, not because the DB is bad, but it's because the DB doesn't have time to react to this type of break, right? When we, he does not know when we're making a break, we know when we're making a break. So if we can get to that restack position, I sell with my eyes, I sell with my my speed. I sell with my body language. That can get me a lot of separation. You dictate the pace, you dictate the tempo, and you dictate the speed of the route when you're able to restack a DB. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. Great job stuttering. Great job not going super wide. Make sure that you stay back over the top, able to drop this thing off, then accelerate back out. And again, you see how he gives himself this space? We're giving myself that space to accelerate. If you're making this break right here and you didn't restack, you have no place to accelerate. The acceleration is where every route's won and lost. So I get a little bit of space. DB doesn't play it horrible, but I have room right here to run back to the ball because I didn't just run straight to the outside. I actually pushed vertical and tried to stay at the bottom of the numbers. Let's watch this thing again one more time at the break point. Great job snapping it off and accelerating back to that ball. Great route. Okay, so now what happens if a DB plays this thing well, what happens if he stays over the top? Do we just quit on the route? Do we just accept that we lost the route? No, and that's what we're gonna be looking at right here. So let's watch this full speed. Clip from Mims here at the Senior Bowl a couple years ago, working this throw-by technique with an inside break on an out route. So now, DB's head up, right? Maybe I wanna take the inside release. Maybe I wanna to work to restack, give him a move at the top, and then accelerate on this out route, right? So it's man coverage with an inside release. I gotta run a 10 yard out. So if I don't just completely dog this dude off the line of scrimmage, this is probably the look that I'm gonna see. If I don't get him to completely bite to the outside and I could go real tight, get back over the top, restack, and then give him a heavy move and then break to the out, this is probably what I'm gonna see. So you guys gotta be able to have a plan for both, right? You gotta be able to understand that I have to know what I'm gonna do. I have to have like a reactionary plan. That's what I call it. I have initial plan off the line. My initial plan off the line is to take an inside release, work to restack, make a break at the top, and then run an out route, right? Me personally, right? That's, that's That would be kind of my thinking right here. But I would also add this throw by in the back of my mind. If I'm pushing vertical and this DB plays it well, that's fine. I can just react off of him, right? A lot of the times it's reacting, especially off the line, especially top of the route, because you just got to get to a spot. You got to get to the spot that the quarterback expects you to be at and be able to keep timing with the quarterback. So when he breaks to the inside right here, you see, doesn't give maybe necessarily the best release. DB's playing this thing super well. He's right hip to hip with him. There is no restack right here. He is hip to hip. He's playing this thing well. He's got hands on him. So what's something I can do? If I take an inside release on an outside breaking route, I can throw this dude by. I can be physical, especially like, let's say maybe he had an inside breaking route and he was running like this and this DB played it well. We didn't get to restack. I could give him a little bit of a lean without getting called for a push up. You push off, you lean into him with your right shoulder, maybe lean into him with your right elbow and you give that little like just shrug, you give that little nudge to him or you could throw him by. There's so many different things that you can do, but you got to be able to have a plan for it. So that's the one thing I recommend 
recommend to you when I'm not able to actually restack. DB plays this thing decently well. DB's right on my hip. I got to be violent with my hands. I got to be physical at the top of this break, and I got to be able to swat him off so I can get some separation and be able to make this play. It's a great rider by Mims. Watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job pushing vertical. Great job being physical at the top and having a plan in case the DB takes my route away. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And also, fellas, two-month-long wide receiver gym program, specific program for wide receivers in the gym to improve their game, performance on the field, get faster, get stronger, put on more muscle. Hope we get you guys on that soon. Again, very first link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.